Hi, I'm Mackenzie with the Lower Platte South NRD. Did you know there are 23 NRDs in the state of Nebraska? NRDs, or Natural Resources Districts, were formed to help protect and conserve Nebraska's natural resources. Today, we're going to talk about groundwater. Here we go! Okay, if we were to go out into your yard and dig a hole, what we might see might look like this. Notice there are different soil types here inside of my groundwater flow model. We have gravel at the top. You can see the gravel all up in here. Most of my model is sand, which is this lighter colored stuff. And down below I have some more gravel, and right above it is a layer of clay. And the clay is a very fine layer, and so what they did in the model to help show it was to put a piece of foam underneath. So picture this, the layer, the layer of clay is right here. Now, how do we get water into the ground? Well, it comes to us in the form of precipitation. I'm going to go ahead and add some water and I want you to pay attention to what happens to the color of the sand as I add the water. You'll see the column over here start to fill up with water when I pour it in. Here we go. When you think of forms of precipitation, what do you think of? I think of rain. I think of snow. I also think of hail, sleet, anything that falls from the sky and puts water back into the ground. Take a look at my model. You can see the sand is starting to turn a darker color as it moves across. The water is moving across my model. This sand is darker. This is still lighter. I'm going to go ahead and add some more water. Here we go. More observations. The water is continuing to go down in this column. And as it goes down in this column, just percolating or going into this sand and gravel and clay. We would call this an example of an aquifer. An aquifer is where we keep our groundwater. Right now we are putting water in. So we're helping to recharge the groundwater in our aquifer system. Now I'm going to take a closer look here. It does look like my sand is pretty dark almost the whole way across now. I'm going to add a little bit more water for you guys. And this time, I not only want you to notice how tall the water is in this column, but let's keep an eye on it as it travels across the whole model and what happens to the water level in this column. Here we go. Now, I'm going to add something else here. You guys keep an eye on what's going on in here. The water level is still going down over here. We're still putting some more water in. Besides rain, water, sleet, and snow, we can also get some recharge into our groundwater from things on the surface of the land. Things like lakes, streams, rivers, and ponds. Notice what happens as I put in lake water into my model. I'm going to come around and take a look with you guys. So you can see the water of the lake is going down. How can you tell? Well, you can see all this blue tint in the sand now. And we tinted it so that you'd be able to see it even better. Let's take a look at the columns of water on each side. On this side, the water level is there. Over here, it's about here, but it's rising and it's rising pretty quickly. Let's take another look like this. Here it is, and here's this. They're almost even. We would refer to this as the groundwater table or the groundwater level. And if I were to draw straight across, I would almost be even with the column over here. So it's essentially the level of the groundwater in the aquifer. In years when we have a lot of rain, does this level go up or does it go down? It goes up. In years when we have a really dry year, is it up or down? You're right, it goes down, okay? So here's my next good question for us. How do 
we get water from the ground that's in this aquifer up to us? You'll notice all these strange looking things in my model. These are examples of wells. Wells are like giant straws punched down into the aquifer that help to pump and bring water up to us. At the bottom of each well, there's a tiny, tiny little screen. And I know it's hard to see, especially in a video, but each one of these wells has a tiny screen at the bottom of it. And the purpose of that is so that when we start to pump water, the well pumps it up, it sucks the water in like a straw, but we don't get any of the sand or the gravel or the clay. There are different well types, okay? Because you're looking at my model and you're thinking, you've got some shallow, you've got some deep, and you've got some drilled medium. There are different wells drilled to different depths depending on what they're used for. We have domestic wells, which maybe would be used on an acreage or a farm for personal water use for a house. We have irrigation wells, which farmers might use to irrigate their crops. And then we also have municipal wells. And those are the wells that cities use to get their people water, the people that live in town. Okay, so we've talked about groundwater basics. We've talked about quantity of groundwater or how much there is and how wells work. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about pollution, okay? The first thing I wanna show you is this, and it's kind of a cool thing. It is like a pump. So this sticks into a well, and when I start working over here, it's gonna to start to pump water for me out of my flow model. Very similar to what you might have in your mouth at the dentist when they say, open up, and they stick that tube in and it sucks all the water out of your mouth. That's kind of like what this is, okay? So, back to pollution. You will have talked about point source and non-point source pollution. We're gonna talk about point source. So, watch this. I'm adding some pollution here. Consider this story. I live on an acreage just outside of town and I have a barrel of gas that I use to help fill my little tractor and my mower for the work I do on my acreage. I notice that my little gas barrel has a crack, but I think it's okay. But what do you think's happening with that tiny crack in that gas barrel? Over time, a little bit of gas leaks out every day, right? And it goes onto the ground and you can see it kind of soaking in. So one day I go to get a drink of water and I'm gonna use this guy right here as an example of my well for my house on my acreage. And I turn it on and this is where my pump comes in everybody. I turn it on and I'm pumping, pumping, pumping. And actually, the water looks okay. If you can kind of see in this tube, and I know it's a super hard thing to see, especially through video, but the water looks pretty clear when it comes up through the tube. But when I get into my cup to take a drink, it doesn't smell that great. So I go ahead and have my water tested, and it turns out that yes, it's polluted. It has some gasoline in it. So stop and consider this. Can you point to the source of pollution? Do we know where it came from? Yes, it came from my small gas barrel on my property. Point source pollution. So now non-point source pollution, if you know what point source is, what is non-point? It comes from a source that you can't exactly point to. And I'm gonna give all of you a chance to discuss non-point source pollution with your teacher versus point source. I wanna show you something else really neat, and that is I'm gonna pump from this well here, and I want you to pay attention to what happens to the color of the sand. Are you ready? Here we go. This is a good hand workout for me. I'm pumping, pumping, pumping. As I pump, pay attention to the color of the sand. Is it changing color? Is the red fading? Is the blue fading? What do you notice? What are some observations that you make? This is a great example of how when you turn a well on and it starts to pump, it will suck the water 
from wherever it's drilled into and pull it up to the surface to be used. And as you're sitting there, you can kind of see it's pretty hard again. And I'm sucking water through here. Take a listen to this. Just like being at the dentist's office. But look at how much water I was able to pump out of there. So our groundwater flow model had a bunch of water in it. And we just pumped out quite a bit. Now let's take one last look really quickly. Let's look at our groundwater level. I'm over here with this column. I'm over here with this column. What do we think? Can I go straight across? Almost. So the groundwater level has decreased from when we first started because I've been pumping water out of this model or this aquifer. All right, awesome job. Okay, and one more thing that I wanna show you because I think it's very interesting and very neat is that now I'm gonna pump from this well here. So what's the difference with this well versus a lot of the other wells in my model? Well, this well, recall, is drilled underneath this layer of clay. And remember, the clay goes all the way like this. So watch, as I start to pump here, what happens to the water level in this column? And what happens to the water level in this column? Are you ready? Here we go. So I am kind of keeping an eye on this column over here and I am noticing it is quickly going down. Why is that? Because I, this is gravel down here underneath a layer of clay and I'm sucking all that water out of it through this well. But, quick look, has this water level been affected at all? No. Why is that? Deep thoughts? Because the layer of clay goes like this and ends here. So we've got our own little aquifer system under this layer of clay. So I could pump all day and I could eventually pump this dry down here and I'd be able to pump all the water out of here. But because this is closed off by clay, I would never be able to get to this water here. So if I go over here and pump in this well, which is gonna be this one right here, guys. Watch what happens here. Make some predictions for me. Is it gonna go up or down? It's going down. And that's because this column is directly connected to the sand on this side of the aquifer. So I've drained it down because I have pumped this well. So very good observations today as we pumped from different wells in our groundwater flow model. Hey, so we learned a lot about groundwater today. There were a lot of key terms in there that I just wanna quickly review with you. We talked about things like what groundwater is, aquifers, recharge, the different types of precipitation that help put water back into or recharge our aquifer system with groundwater. We also talked about the groundwater level or groundwater table, and also things like point and non-point source pollution. So while we were sad we couldn't be with you in person to do this presentation, we're super happy you were able to join us this way through video so we could talk groundwater with you. All right, thanks and have an awesome day.